All right, so today we're going to be going over what you need to do uh, for a Palalu chip, or what you need uh, material-wise and whatnot. So uh, we're going to first off start off with obviously the Palalu chip. Uh, you need one of those or something similar. Uh, in this case, I'm going to be using a switch. So I'm going to need a what is it? A hundred hundred kilo ohm uh, quarter watt resistor. Uh, and I'll be explaining that later. That's that's here, which is uh, in the manual, which is another thing you'll need. Um, let's see. I like to use test lead ends for certain things, and I'll be showing you that later. Uh, I picked these up at Radio Shack. I think it was like uh, three or four bucks. Uh, comes with a whole bunch of leads ends that basically plug into the board. Uh, as you can see on this one here, I've got a. It, it's got the the ends that basically just plug right in there. So. Uh, those are helpful for jumpering and some other things. So we'll get to that in a little bit. Um, your heat heat shrink tubes. Um, after you solder your stuff, it's better to actually do that than it is to wrap it with electrical wire or electrical tape. Um, let's see. Two battery packs, one to run the Palalu, one to run the servos. Uh, servos, some end leads. These are actually from uh, old school PCs back in the day when they actually used to uh, require you to plug... Uh, the cable into the back of the CD-ROM drive and then into your sound blaster board or sound card. Uh, so I've got a whole bunch of these still from back when I was a computer tech ages ago. Uh, LED lights. Um, these are resistored. I'm going to have to remove them because uh, the board has a resistor in it already. So I have to remove the resistors on, the, on these here to make it work because they're kind of dim. Uh, a knife. Utility knife, just to cut, cut ends, whatever, cut wires. A lighter. Now, uh, you're going, well, lighter? Uh, okay, so what you do is you take a lighter, and uh, say you got an end, and you just heat up the end real quick, and then pull off the insulation. Um, so, lighter, solder, and soldering iron. So, those are pretty much what you're going to need. Uh, there's a switch as well. Let me see if I can pull one out real quick. Uh, it's just a momentary switch. Uh, pretty simple. I don't think I got one in here. It's in one of my other bins. So, um, but I'll, I'll show you that later. So, anyways, that's the introduction of this. Of course, you're gonna probably want the uh, Plalu uh, Maestro Servo Controller Guide. Um, gives you a lot of information, uh, diagrams, and how to wire things and whatnot. So, uh, with that, I'm gonna go ahead and fire up the soldering iron, and uh, we're gonna go ahead and start building this board. So now the uh, soldering iron is all heated up. We're going to go ahead and start soldering into this board. So let's go ahead and rip into this uh, packaging here. And here's our chip. So one thing I, f I forgot to mention is I like to use a piece of glass. Um, it's a static negative and um, it's a nice surface to, to um, solder on top of because you don't end up melting your tabletop or whatnot. So. Uh, so let's go ahead and start with the uh, the resistor first. I'm going to go ahead and uh, clip this here. And then we're going to go ahead and join these two pieces together. So normally what I do is I just twist them. Twist them together. Now, if, if you look at the diagram on this, it shows it's uh, off the board. It's got a 5 volt power right there. And so, what I'm going to end up doing is actually soldering this into the board there from the back side. So, I'll just bend this over real quick. Uh, and then attach this plus another wire that goes off to the, the switch. So, we're going to go ahead and set that down for now. We're going to grab a length of wire. And for usually for the wire, um, we're going to do something pretty long uh, just because we need to have it go from, uh, let's say, your, your, your glove. So it's an easy, easily push, pushable switch maybe on your thumb, uh, maybe on the bottom of your pinky. But basically, we're looking for a length of, of wire that goes at least from your hand up to around the back of your neck. So we're probably looking at about, I don't know, four feet worth of wire. So let me go ahead and cut this real quick. So that's actually a pretty long length of wire if you look at it. So we're going to actually split one end of this off. 
separate the wire. And we're going to at actually attach one end of this, which, uh, let me see where I put my lighter at. Okay, we're going we're to skip the lighter. I'm just going to go ahead and strip the casing off the wiring. There we go. I'm going to splice that into here. twisting the wire together here and then we're actually going to attach this in between so I'm going to bend this a little bit here at the end stick that over the end and then we're going to solder that whole thing and then shrink wrap over the top of it so let me go ahead and solder that right now Alright, so that's soldered down. We're going to let that cool down. Actually, I'm going to push in that just a little bit to make sure all the solder's tight against the wiring. And then we'll install some shrink wrap, tu wrap tubing on top of that. So, I'm just going to go with the length of this here. I'm going to slip this over the top of this because we still need to solder this into the board. And then once that's soldered, I'm going to move this down to the point at which it's soldered and then heat the whole thing up so it's, um, so it's all insulated from other electrical components. So uh, that's the first part of that. I'll be back in a little bit. All right, so I have went ahead and soldered up the leads. So this is the wire that I was talking about earlier. Uh, it's got a switch on the end of it now. doesn't matter which way you, you do it because basically you're doing a, a resistored short. Um, I know it's really not called that, but basically that's what you're doing. Uh, you're basically feeding a different voltage through the chip, and I'll get into that later. So, as you can see, I've soldered it there, and uh, I still have this. So, I'm going to go ahead and heat this up right now. It wasn't so darn windy. So that's, uh, that's better than what you get using electrical tape. Definitely a lot better, um, firmer connection. So, so um, normally what I do is I actually have a smaller tube. I've already used it. I usually use red and, red and black or red and blue uh, to code the wires so I know where they go. So let me go ahead and just show you real quick uh, how this would be set up. And we take this off for, for right now. So uh, according to the diagram, you're looking at this, and it's going to be uh, the resistor pull-up goes into, and I'm going to be using number one for this. So it's uh, this is the, po the power for the chip, or for the servos, and it's going to be plugged into the socket to the left. So you just push that on there, and this one's going to be for the one on the right. Okay. 
Then we need to go to the power for here. And I'll solder that on in a minute. Um, after I put the heat, the, the, the shrink wrap tube over back over it. Um, I may do just a little bit longer and then bend this down with the profile of the board like that, just so it's lower profile. So um, I'll solder this and then uh, we'll move on to the next step. I think this is pretty much the major part of the, the soldering for this board. Everything else is pretty much just setting up uh, lights and then the servos and uh, some other miscellaneous other things as well. So um, be right back. All right, so the last thing we got to do, as you can see here, I've got the uh, the chip uh, wired up with the resistor to the switch. And as I said before, it's just the first first and last pins on the connector there. So the, the next step is going to be the servos. So we're going to take the servos here, and we're going to imagine that these are inside the helmet. So they're going to be facing this way towards the front. And what we're going to do is take them down to the lowest possible settings. So as you can see here, they're different. So what i got to do is actually remove this one. And then I reposition it according to what I think would be about the right... Let's just do this. We're going to do an angle there. And we're going to take an angle here. That looks about right right there. So I've got to cut this tab off the side. And then uh, the next video I'll be showing you how to mount the servos um, to the arms to make the face plates go up and down. So um, but that's pretty much it for now. Uh, stay tuned for part two, guys. Uh, thanks once again for watching. Uh, share, like, and as always, guys, do your thing. Thanks.